Hello, NEPHEW community. This is Dr. Kelly Reed, Senior Medical Science Liaison with Otsuka Pharmaceutical Development and Commercialization. I am here with Dr. Nelson Copet, who will be providing us with a historical perspective on polycystic kidney disease. Dr. Copet is a clinical professor of medicine at Morsani College of Medicine in Allentown, Pennsylvania. He is also the Chief of Nephrology at Lehigh Valley Hospital the Medical Director and Director of Research at the Northeast Clinical Research Center, also in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Kelly. Autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease is the most common and inherited kidney disease that we deal with. It affects one in 400 to one in 1,000 live births, accounting for the 600,000 Americans and the 12.5 million people globally who express the phenotype. It also, um, half of those patients expressing the phenotype will progress to end-stage kidney disease by the time they're 60. Thus, we know that ADPKD is the fourth most common cause of end-stage kidney disease after diabetes, hypertension, and glomerulonephritis. Actually, the first report of ADPKD was in the 1500s when King Stefan Bathory of Poland, who succumbed and died in 1586 at the age of 53 after a nine-day illness consisting of progressive fatigue, malaise, pallor, chest pain, and eventually having a drop attack associated with twitching, which then progressed into a coma. At autopsy, they discovered that he had cyst-laden kidneys, which were actually described as being larger than bull's kidneys, consistent with ADPKD. Thus, King Bathory succumbed in the fifth decade of his life, most likely to a intracerebral aneurysm rupture, which we now know is not uncommonly associated with ADPKD, as well as progressive uremia. This relationship between PKD and kidney failure actually was not described until much later in 1841 when Dr. Pierre Royer uh, published his article on cystic degeneration of the kidney as a cause of kidney failure. The term polycystic kidney disease was first used during the doctoral thesis presentation of Felix Lajars in 1888 on polycystic kidney disease where he not only demonstrated that it affected both kidneys, but also that besides the anatomical aberration, it was associated with symptomatology. It then wasn't until actually 313 years after the death of King Bathory that Dr. Steiner in 1888 first identified the genetic predilection of this disease, which later was found to be of autosomal dominant penetrance, hence the name autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, or ADPKD as we commonly refer to it today, with further epidemiologic studies in the early 1900s in Copenhagen and Olmsted County, revealing the high variability in the phenotypic expression of this disease, even within the same family. Dr. Dalgard, in, uh, in 1957, reporting on his 284 patients and their families with ADPKD stimulated significant interest in further studying this disease. Eloquent research over the past 35 years have significantly um, uh, increased our understanding about the pathogenesis and natural history of this disease, starting with the intriguing discovery that when cyclic AMP is added to the culture media of Madden Darby canine kidney cells grown in cell culture on glass surfaces, they tended to develop into cystic structures. A series of studies then revealed the intricate linkage between the PKD1 and PKD2 mutation, which was discovered in the mid 1990s, affecting polycystin 1 and 2 function and resulting in 
an increase in intracellular cyclic AMP concentrations in renal tubular epithelial cell. It was then also found that this set the stage for the development of cysts, but that a second modulator would be required to actually manifest these cysts. An intriguing candidate for this was found in vasopressin, which on binding to the V2 receptor resulted in a much further increase in cyclic AMP intracellularly, accounting for then the development of cellular proliferation and significant increase in fluid secretion, causing the cyst to form and increase in size over time, eventually destroying the kidney, so that over 40 to 60 years, they progressed to uh, significant kidney destruction and end-stage kidney disease in half of these patients by the time they reach 60 years of age, re re necessitating renal replacement therapy or succumbing to the disease as we saw with King Bathory um, in the 1500s. Over the past 19 years, a consortium of radiologic imaging studies of polycystic kidney disease, the CRISP study, in a tour de force clearly defined the natural history of this disease as well as the development of predictors for defining which patients would progress more rapidly given the variability of the expression of the phenotype. So that we have now uh, uh, the ability to stratify our patients with ADPKD regarding the rate of their progression and helping to address this serious disease culminating a 434-year journey into ADPKD. I'd like to thank Dr. Copet for his comprehensive historical perspective on polycystic kidney disease. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the presentation. We'll see you next time here on NEPHEW.